Good morning and welcome to another online service here at House of Power Outreach. I'm Pastor Tori, Pastor Ed and I, senior pastors here at our church. And we just welcome you and thank you for joining us this morning uh, here in February. And so we're just uh, so, so pleased to have you with us this morning. I have a shout out to Brianna Ramsey. She, she had her uh, her baby this week and just so blessed and healthy baby. And uh, Chris and Sadie with their seventh grandchild. And so Mari with, with a little one in the family that for him to be able to take care of and help with. So we're just so blessed for the family. We'll, we'll definitely continue lifting them up in prayer and please you do the same. Uh, as we get prepared to go into the wow, uh, the women of worth and wisdom is going to be having their waffles and um, I want to say waffles and chicken. It might be that. I'm not sure, but <clears throat> I know waffles are involved. Uh, we're going to pray and then we're going to enter into the service. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your word this this morning. I just pray, Father God, uh, for your hand upon me, Lord God, that, that your will be done, that I decrease, you increase. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's about being tasteful. You know, that's obviously a positive thing. And, and when you're tasteless, that's not positive or doing tasteless things. The Bible, the Bible talks about, you know, we're flavored uh, and about salt and, and we're flavored in faith uh, set up for greatness. And it's such a great thing that God wants us to have taste to our walk in Christ. Um, you know, since becoming a Christian, there, there hasn't been a dull moment. There hasn't been a time uh, where things are not just uh, exciting, fired up, living by faith, trusting God with all of my heart, soul, mind, and body. It has just been an incredible adventure to be able to walk with God. So in Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 through 13, it says, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets before you, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its savior, savor, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. So the, the, the progression of these three verses together I'm talking about how people persecute you, and that's going to happen. Um, and and you go on because again, it ain't about you that they're after. They're about the cry about they're after the Christ in you. Same way, the the enemy can care less about what you own and what you do, but if he can get you to stop believing or lose your confidence in the Word of God and in the will of God or question, he can get you to start to give in and and let things wash over you and start to rinse off the thing that should make you taste tasteful into the things of God. And persecution is not about getting back and getting even. As the body of Christ, uh, we need to quit trying to defend ourselves and, and, and let God be our defense. Just walk on with Christ. It's your yay be yay, your nay be nay, and everything else proceeds from evil. You know, we've just been, been on that whole call that if someone's going to believe a lie, telling your side is not even worth your time anyway. Go on and walk with God. They're not persecuting you. They're persecuting the Christ in you. And so here it goes in and then it talks about we are the salt of the earth. And so uh, about, you know, uh, again, salt can make things that can enhance the flavor of food. You know, pepper adds to it, but salt enhances it. And when we enhance our walk, this is one of those very areas that when uh, people are, are attacking or coming against you, the greatest thing that you can do, the most, the saltiest or shall I say, the most tasteful thing to do is not to try to get even or fight back with them, but to walk on and just say, I'm going to go ahead and serve God. Anyway, I'm going to walk with God. How unfortunately, one of the places that happens is that when people do go through something or even the persecutor will walk away from Christ. If they're, if they are, if they're in Christ or they'll walk away from the very one that Jesus is saying, I'm here for you. Don't let them chase you away from me. Don't let them, uh, you watch how they live their lives and watch their faith. They're walking away from me. They're not, the whole persecution part was not about you. It's about me. And so in your faith, it stays salty when we stay salty. Salty means I'm going to hang on to the word of God. Uh, even in the world, the world knows that taste it is a powerful weapon in anything being done is, is being salty. Now, again, with, with the labels of the world, if you're, you're said that person salty, that means that you're adding some kind of anger or frustration or something. But that's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible said don't let anything take away your flavor for the word of God and for your faith in God and for your obedience in God. 
it, it as believers, the main taste that should come from our life to the to the world is faith. Faith is your salt. So when people come to you, I don't believe in God anymore. No, my salt is I believe in Jesus. I believe he came. I believe he died. I believe he rose from the grave. That is my faith. That's where I stand. I believe in God. That's my hope. Uh, I, I stay right there. I'm going to keep that salt no matter what. I'm going to sprinkle that so that my kids can taste that, so my family can taste that, so my friends can taste that. I'm not backing off my faith. And, and right now we're in a world where, you know, more and more people like, you know, been offended about, if, you know, if you say certain things, but nobody has a problem on TV or anywhere offending the faith or, or the belief of, of Christianity. I have no, no, no problem saying offensive things, using profanity against the body of Christ. We have to get our salt back. And I'm not telling you to go out there and be insulting, but go out there and stand for what you believe in. Stand in your faith. Don't be ashamed to pray in public. Don't be ashamed to talk about Christ uh, around people. They're willing to talk about whatever they're talking about. Don't lose your salt because you may be the minority in that situation. Uh, salt wasn't just good for making things taste better, but it preserved meats from decay. And when we keep our saltiness, we stay fresh on our on our stand in the word and preserve it for the next generation. And a lot of times you, you can hear it even today where folks are saying, well, you know, the, the Christianity is gone and, the, you know, God is that 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 time is past. No, it's it may not have been preserved because uh, of people have lost their ability to stand and believe for what God has already spoken, but it's not past. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's continuing. He's eternal. Eternal time cannot stop eternity. And so here's where where Christ is calling us to that point of being able to just stand and stand on what we believe in. Don't lose your saltiness. It's it's preserving for the next generation. If you're raised in a house where they did not go to church, they did not serve God. There was no taste for God. And that taste has to be restored. And we can even see it in our own lives where we're starting to kind of go routinish and, and stop sprinkling that 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 preserved, start stop sprinkling that taste for God in our lives and having that in our lives and, and putting it on everything that we do, everything. I, I love about being married to my wife, um, Pastor Rita. Pastor Rita is always mindful of us praying about everything that we do, no matter how small. Put the taste, put the salt on it, man. Put the salt on it. It's going to make you want to pursue God and it's going to make you want to have the things of God in it. And it, I don't care what it is. It, probably one of my biggest things and, and frustrations, even with her, is that if I'm looking for something, um, you know, pen, whatever, she always asks, did you pray? You know, now I understand. Did you put any salt on it, man? That thing would draw you to it if you just put some salt on it. And I, 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 I love and get frustrated about it at the same time from her. But I, I completely understand why God has her uh, keeping us in that place of our lives. So we preserve our influence in this world when we stand for God, no matter how much circumstance or people try to get us to give up being flavorful. So again, if you're out at lunch with friends, you're, you're you know at workplace uh, when, when when the enemy is attacking you and and trying to get you to step down off your faith, it's trying to keep you from from preserving it. Even at that time, trying to keep you from preserving it for your family, preserving it for the next generation. It is trying to stop you uh, from giving it to your kids. And so you have to go back and go like, wait a minute, this is an opportunity for me to spread the salt of the earth and be the salt that God called me to be. I don't want to get used to being flavorless until the point to where not only do I stop doing it at work, now I stop doing it at home. And now I'm stopped doing it in my personal life. No, no, no. Keep your taste going for God. Uh, no matter what is happening. So we, we want to make sure we preserve that belief in God's word and walking in that belief is what brings flavor to ourselves and those around us. And so we want to make sure that we're in that place where we're bringing that flavor each and every time, each and every time in our lives so that others can taste. Psalms 37, 34 verse 7 through 9. And it says, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. So again, we look at this point. You obviously see the, the main verse in there about taste and see that the Lord is good. Um, I, you know, I, and one of the things too that, that I, I mean, I have a lot of allergies and so when my nose and sinuses is jacked up, my taste is jacked up. It's like, I can't taste things. I try to get the spiciest things 
uh, to kind of get my taste restored in those things. And, and I think it's the same thing with the body of Christ. If you're feeling like, man, I'm just not hearing from God. I'm, I'm in a funk. I'm in a, I'm, in a, I'm in a rut. Go get the spiciest word of God. Go forgive that person that hurt you. Go and step out. Go give beyond what you would have ever given. Go, go do something beyond. Go get your taste back. And, and begin to open up the airways of your faith and open up the airways of your hope and your joy and being able to get it back. And so Satan is, 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 all, is, is always after the power of God in us and challenges. He challenges our identity and everything we believe God to do just like he did with Jesus. It wasn't about hunger when he was fasting 40 days, 40 nights. He was like, if you are the son of God, when God just said, this is my beloved son, he's after your identity. So if he can get you to start disbelieving or questioning who you are in Christ, he can start taking away your desire to walk in power in Christ. And so at any identity outside of our faith in what God calls us is flavorless walking uh, toward unbelief. And it is a directional thing when he can get you to stop um, uh, uh, accepting what God has said about us and, and start to give us to take up this flavorless walk. Because again, the flavor doesn't challenge anything. The flavor doesn't change anything. Uh, if my walk looks like just like the rest of the world, I, I, I there's no taste to my walk. There's no difference. There's no separation between me and a person who's not accepted Christ because of the way I live and the way I talk and the way I act because it looks just like them. You got to spread that flavor on your life, not only just for you, but for the people that are around you that are watching and seeing you. So, so it is part of that. Any that identity that, that's outside of that is leading toward unbelief. And we don't, we want to, we, you know, we know we say we, we believe in God, but our life should be a match of what we say we believe in. The taste and sight are physical senses. And this is where the, the scripture says taste and see. These are physical senses. And, and, and with it, we interact, uh, we, we look at those parts of it, we interact with the material world, with our taste and our see. Uh, in some ways, faith is like a spiritual sense. With it, we interact with the spiritual world. So again, it's like, God, I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, sensing and I'm feeling your presence and hearing your voice. And, and it's again, sprinkle the salt in your prayer life. Go in, pray extra 10 minutes. Go in and seek God in the word extra. Worship, do whatever to get the salt uh, back in your world. To taste and see are like trusting God, loving him seeking him, looking unto him. So there's your salt, there's your flavor. So living according to the taste of grace we receive from God that no man could earn. It can't be taken away because that taste comes from God's best and makes us want to give him our best. And that's where the flavor comes from. Flavor was Jesus. Uh, God gave his only begotten son. It was the greatest taste. It was the greatest thing that we could taste of grace and we can taste of the mercy of God to have his only begotten son take away all of our sins and give us his righteousness. That that what a taste, what, what, what a glorious thing for us to be able to taste freedom taste innocence because of what Jesus did on the cross and what Jesus took away for us. And same thing. Give that back. Give your best back to God. Show him the flavors on you. Show others the flavors on you. There's something for them to taste throughout the problem. There, the, as a body of Christ during the pandemic, people should have tasted by his stripes. We are healed. No weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Though the enemy may have come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord reset. That those are things that, that they should have been able to taste on the body of Christ even during that time. And so we're looking at these parts, giving them our best. Our lives should not be limited to, to the acknowledgement that all, of, all have sinned, but it should also reveal the power of God while we are here on earth. And, and that's kind of one of the things too. People uh, love to talk about Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That absolutely is true. But God also said, I came that you might have life and that more abundantly. There's also the part of that is not just uh, limiting down to what our mistakes are and what we that we all have messed up. But we also want to level up to what God has not messed up. God has given us faith. God has given us joy. God has given us hope. We are, we are not limited to where we come from in our background, right? What we start with is not what we stuck with. Well, our peace fits somewhere in this picture. And God wants us to know that that peace is a powerful peace that, that belongs in this world for such a time as this. He's called us to do the things he's called us to do. So we are either living up to our faith or down to our doubts. Wow. Wow, we're either living up to our faith 
or down to our doubts. And, and probably one of the most discouraging things is when we pray and, and maybe something hasn't happened in a while and we start to live downward. Downward to, well, it ain't happened. Well, it still ain't happened. God, maybe don't hear me. I'm, I'm no longer believing for that anymore. Well, you're living down now. Go back and live up, to, up to your faith, right? We look up into the hills. My help, it comes from the Lord. In Isaiah 59, 19, I just quoted it earlier. Of the enemy, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord raised standards. When the enemy comes in, the spirit of the Lord lifts standards against him. Your standard, your saltiness should get even more flavorful because the saltiness is going to preserve what you believe. We are empowered with the standard of God through his word, and it is higher than anything the enemy can bring against us. What do I do? I want to go up. I want to go up in the word. I want to go up. I want to go up. I'm going to challenge and charge my faith and charge my belief and charge every fiber of my being to do that. I, I tend to do that with with, uh, with with working out. I try to do the same concept of my body is not responding or I'm being disobedient in my eating. I'll get out there. Okay, we're going to run another mile. We're going to run up the hill this time. We're going to, you know, whatever it is. And so, and, and God is not about your works, but he is about your relationship with him. You know, and he is about that and spending more time with him. Uh, Hebrews 6, 5 and 1 Peter 2 and 3, we are called to live beyond the casual, oh my goodness, casual tasting of God and more of an everlasting savor of God's power. God is not Sam's and, and, and Costco where you get samples of him. And God wants you to sit down at a meal. He prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies. And he's saying, quit sampling a little bit of worship. Quit sampling prayer. Quit sampling your, your a witness to others. Quit, quit being a sample. They're going to forget about the sample and be hungry for something else where they can eat more. Go and, and be the buffet of, of a faith and hope of, of everyone around you. Listen to this in Luke chapter 22 and verse 31 uh, through 30, uh, 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as we. But I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And, and I, there's so much in this. And, and in fact, I understand that the devil is going to attack, right? John 16, 33, uh, uh, in this world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer, overcome the world. And so here's Simon, and Jesus tells him, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you, to have you. And he said, I pray that your faith doesn't fail. Well, well, the wild thing about that is Jesus didn't say, I, I'm praying that you don't have any problems. He said, I pray that your faith doesn't fail because if you can keep your faith, you can keep all the rest of the things about you. You can keep your hope. You can keep your joy. You can keep your peace. If you keep your faith, he, he's like, I'm not getting rid of the problems. I'm telling you how to stand through it, how to stand and overcome it. He desires to have you. Even if that's just having you pick a side that doesn't line up with the word of God, pick a culture, pick a behavior that doesn't line up with the word of God, because that's what everyone else is doing. And, and, and he's saying he's sifting you. He's trying to get you to ultimately deny your faith. I pray that your faith doesn't fail you. I pray that your faith stands there. I pray that no matter what your kid is going through, no matter how tough it is, don't side with the evil that's trying to take them. Side with the God that's within them, that you train them up, and that their faith will not fail. Their faith will make, remain strong. And so when you begin to pull that in there, he didn't pray for that the problem to go away. He allowed those things. So once Peter was converted, and here's the other part, go strengthen your brothers. Once the salt, once the salt, you realize he couldn't get that salt off you. Go and preserve your others so they can taste and see that the Lord is good, so they can taste the, the power of God. We are witnesses. We This is a, this is a time, and I'd say last days, it's, it's man, we should be taking it out there. The, the world is hungry. They, they, they're they tired of just going through the motion. They all look like drones. Everybody, you know, look at it in sports. Everybody does the same dance. Everybody does the same thing. Everybody, does, they're looking for a different taste, and they need to taste the word, taste a strong vibe. And, and I know, you know, all of us who grew up in, in our denominations, but our denominations at least made it a point that everyone got to a spot. And, 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 and again, being there, being in a place where they could at least hear God. You know, one of the things that, that I know growing up and, and, and being that I'm black, that's what I heard. It, find a church somewhere, no matter what town we were in, my mom's, find a church somewhere. And you should be, the, the Bible says we are the church. We are the temple of God. Someone should be able to find us somewhere. 
Find us somewhere in our faith. Find us somewhere in our hope. Find us somewhere in joy. Find us somewhere in peace. We should be found somewhere. And so he was, he was in that. Once Peter was converted, he told him, strength of brother, meaning that God didn't just uh, give sal him salvation for himself, but to go and deliver others. So, you know, and then when you hear people say, well, uh, my, 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 my Christianity or my faith is personal. No, your, your faith, yeah, it's a personal relationship. It's a personal relationship to go and help others. It is not just for you. God saved you, but it's not just for you. It's for those, for you and those around you. He's going to go strengthen your brother. Go strengthen others. There are people waiting on you to, to step out and step up in your belief. And so he, he wanted us to do that. Jesus didn't, uh, Jesus didn't die to just keep us safe. He died to make us dangerous, right? And, 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 and then the, the, uh, uh, Matthew, uh, 18, 19, the, the, uh, kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. You, you got to be as active about getting your prayer life back and getting your worship back and getting your faith back and your hope back, getting your joy, getting the presence of God back. You, you got to be active, violently active as you are about your regular routine shows or your regular routine, whatever it is, be active about it. He died to make us dangerous to death, hell, and the grave. He died to make us that dangerous. So quit just holding the position of salvation and start storming the works of Satan in this world. No matter how small the lie is, I mean, the way that they are after our children sexually, the sexual explicit books, the sexual explicit things that they're putting into elementary schools, the speaking of oral sex, the speaking of things that they're doing after the elementary kids, no, not on our watch. No, let's sprinkle salt on our kids every morning. And when they try to put that stuff on there, that it'll burn away from our kids. It won't be able to stay on them because they'll be saturated in the things of God, saturated with the salt of God. Jesus left us with too much power to just want to die so we can get out of here. Oh, refire. Don't retire. Refire. He strengthened us to make a difference in this world. Romans 8, 11 through 13 says this, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. You know, the verse in the Bible in, in Matthew 26, it says, and, and when he came back and the disciples he told them to watch and pray that they enter not into temptation. Can you not tear it for one hour? Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Wherever your flesh is tired, turn to the main tank, which you should be on that anyway. Your spirit should not be your reserve. Your flesh should be. Your spirit should be your main well. It is your main strength. It is the thing that you pull from. It is the thing that you grow from. And then your flesh will follow that. If you get that upside down, and your spirit follows your flesh. I mean, I'll pray when I get time. I'll speak to Jesus when I get time. I'll go to church when I get time. I'll give when I get enough. It's upside down. That's the upside down world. And that's not what we're called to do. Hold your head up as a believer, knowing that the spirit that broke ground, pushed the rock away, shook the world, opened graves around Jesus, lives in us. We're empowered to shake off generational curses. We're empowered to be strengthened, to go further than any other person in our family. We're empowered to walk in greatness, to walk in purity, to walk in hope. We're empowered to have lasting marriages, lasting family, trained up children. We're empowered to believe. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. Yeah, that's why you wake up some days feeling like I'm on top of the world. I can do anything. Stay there. Don't go up for the moment and then climb back down because you got in traffic. No, stay there. It empowers. Jesus lives in us and empowers us to have breakthrough. No matter how much things are trying to, to uh, bury us, stronger than yesterday, God called us to arrive in heaven by living spiritually dangerous here on earth. Well done is a, a result of living well-believed. Come on, let's believe well. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, that the flavor's coming back. Flavor's back on us. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for not losing taste in me. And not losing, Father God, your taste about me and my family. 
Father, I thank you for gathering it back of me, and I'm ready to go forth and spread it all over this entire world. And my life will not longer, no longer be tasteless. My spiritual life will be tasteful. Father, we thank you for it. We praise you. Thank you for just a blessed week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us. Can't wait to see you next time. Please, we're 10 a.m. We're in person. We'd love to see you there. See you next time. Bye-bye.